Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rich. Right now I am preparing to uh, run the rough-in for an electric floor heating system that I'm going to be installing in the bathroom. Um, so during the roughing, rough out stage of electrical, this is something that you need to prepare for uh, so that you have the uh, junction box and the location of where the thermostat will be located uh, in the room that you're going to be installing it. So uh, in the master bathroom, I'm going to be installing the thermostat in this area. So I have placed a, a metal junction box here. Um, and based on the instructions, you can use a, a, a three inch depth single gang junction box or they recommend actually using a double gang um, if you're going to do something a little shallower just so that you have room to kind of pack all those wires uh, that are going to be in that box. Um, it just allows for a little more space. I decided to put it uh, in this location because it's more central so when I run the wire uh, it's more central in the area of the of the bathroom itself and, and should be fairly easy when I want to go ahead and run the floor wire okay so we have the junction box here um, and to run the rough electrical for a electric floor heat uh, depending on the the size the square footage of your room um, you'll need to determine uh, how much power you need to run to the junction box. I have a fairly small bathroom, uh, master bathroom, so it's not a huge number in square footage. It's probably about 115 to 116 square foot. Um, so I will be able to get away with uh, simply using a 120 volt circuit. Uh, I don't need to go to 240. Uh, which is good uh, because I didn't have to do much work in terms of running uh, a new home run to the panel for for that power. Fortunately, I already had a 20 amp circuit that was uh, being run and it was dedicated to uh, the the bathtub jacuzzi tub that I had uh, previously. So since it was a dedicated line and it wasn't being used for anything else, I was able to repurpose that. Uh, that cable um, and bring it over here. So it was pretty straightforward for me. Obviously, if you needed to run a, a separate, uh, and it has to be dedicated simp solely for the electric heat, um, you may need to run another uh, 20 amp circuit to uh, the location that you're planning to install it in. Or two if you're doing, if it's a pretty large location and you need to run uh, a 240. Uh, volt circuit so right now the, you know, obviously the power is dead on this uh, I have it turned off at the at the panel um, but I want to go ahead and install it I need to put um, a, a clamping uh, ring here and then I also want to run some uh, some EMT um, conduit down the to the floor so that after I sheetrock um, it's going to make a whole make it a whole lot easier to fish the electrical wires from the the floor heating system up through the wall and into the junction box if I have the conduit already pre-installed in there, so I don't have to use a fish tape and do all that stuff. Um, and you'll want it in conduit anyhow. Another thing that you might want to consider um, at the bottom is potentially drilling a couple of holes where the conduit you know meets the floor here um, drill here and then and then have a another hole drilled here to kind of meet in the middle so that you kind of have like a little bit of an L shape going up to the conduit um, so that the wire has somewhere to go um, and that it's not being pinched uh, up against because you want it as flat as possible when it goes through the wall, you don't want it to kind of have a bend up because obviously you're going to be putting tile over top of it. So you want it to be as flat as possible as it goes into the wall. So let's go ahead and get a clamping ring and get this wire uh, put into place. I know that the thermostat's probably going to be centered in the box. So I think I'm going to put, I'm going to bring the wire in onto the side 
um, just so that it's kind of out of the way of the box and depending on what how depth how deep the box is so I think that you know that's probably the spot where I want to knock the uh, knockout hole through so we just need to pop that loose and then just bend it out of the way Then we want to go ahead and put in this Romex clamp. And this is a 3 8 I like to actually get it about three quarters of the way from where I want it to be. And then I twist it. So you want at least uh, an eighth to a quarter of an inch showing inside the box so that it is that you know that this clamp is clamping on the outer sleeve and it's protected. So I think that we'll go right there. So I like stripping all this stuff off before I put it in the junction box rather than doing it afterwards. It's just a lot easier to do it out here than once it's in the box and you got sheetrock up and you're trying to work inside that hole. It's just a whole lot easier, I think. So now we're just going to fish it down through there. Now that we've got it in there, we can kind of bend it up and then bend it back down. Kind of make a an N or an M shape, depending on what you how much you got. And I got extra here, so I'm just I'm not gonna cut it off. I'm just gonna leave it for now. I'll, when I go to the finish finishing process and installing it then I can cut it to size whatever I end up needing but for right now this is good okay so we want to go ahead and tighten this down good and snug but you don't want it too bad to where it's pinching really hard so now that I've got it set up we can go ahead and nail this into place and you just need to make sure that you're 10 inches within 10 inches of the box I like to be within six to eight inches. Now that we've got the wire in place, we can go ahead and knock out the spots for the conduit. It's going to go down to the sensor and the actual wire heating element. And I bought these, uh, basically they're just screw-on connector to connect to the junction box. And then it has a set screw to hold the conduit in place. So, and it's got... Um, kind of a coated sleeve so that there is no um, possibility of you know the wire getting frayed from the metal so it has some insulation there so we want to go ahead and put that in place and screw it up in there
Now the only thing left we need to do is just to go ahead and take a measurement down to the floor and see how how long these need to be. So that's 48 inches to the floor. I mean it's just about 48. I mean it's probably just going to be above the floor. So I think I might take it up maybe a half inch. All right, so let's go ahead and cut the uh, conduit to 47 and a half, and then uh, we'll we'll install it. So obviously, I deburred these edges, and I'll likely put them on this side but the opposite side it's unprotected and it's pretty smooth because they factories cut it but um, it's good to put these little insulating bushings on the EMT just to just to protect it and this just goes over top It's nice and smooth for when the wire comes up through there it it will pass without you know when you're pulling it up it won't end up slicing it all the way up so we can just put that one on there <clears throat> and now this can go up in this side Tight and then tighten the set screw. And tighten the set screw on this one. Now that it's in place, I can go ahead and put the um, the mud ring on. So it's ready to go for for the next step. So I'll follow up when I get ready to actually install the heating uh, wire and how I plan to install it in my bathroom. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Uh, if you like this video and you found it useful, uh, please like it below or subscribe to my channel for any uh, future updates that I might post. Um, all right, thanks a lot everybody for watching.